Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and as of the recording of this video, it is June 18th and Google just pushed off the latest update or latest version for Android 15 beta. Now this one is Android 15 beta three, pushed out today, June 18th, the build number ending in 517022 with the June security patch. And if at any point in time you ever were curious to join the beta program, if you own a Google Pixel device, now is the time because beta three is the stability platform update. So that means that pretty much what you see here, you won't really see many bugs at all. And it's very, very close and similar to everything you would see whenever Android 15 is officially launched, which should be during the month of August, which means we have the rest of June and then all of July to to get all the tweaks and bugs and fixes out of this, which more than likely there shouldn't be many as this one is platform stable. Now, as you scroll down, you'd be able to see, you know, what is new in beta three. This one right here is mostly for developers to see what they're able to do with autofill and a few biometric things. So this one isn't really for us just yet, but we will be able to see a bunch of changes happening in these areas. If you own any of these Google Pixel devices, you can join beta three right now. And I can always place that link below the video inside of the description. Now, instead of me reading through some of the top resolved issues, how about I just show you every single thing that is brand new or changed from the last beta, which was Android 15 beta 2. So we'll start the video off by going inside of your audio settings. So when you open this up, pretty much all you were doing was pressing the volume rocker button, either the volume up or down. You tap your three little dots. This has changed from Android 14 and you can still see that it's just beautiful. It's big, it's sitting all right here. But the one change that's happened from the beta two over into the current beta three is that you cannot minimize it. And you had the option to hit a little down arrow and it'll basically only show your media option. So let me show you what it looked like right before for this update. When I move over here, this is a screenshot that I took earlier, just right before I updated my phone. And you can see that when I took a look at my little audio settings, I had the down arrow. And when I hit the down arrow, it made it look like this. So you don't have the option to minimize it anymore. And maybe that's the thing. Maybe sometimes you would minimize it, forget to bring it right back up. And so then this way you would have to bring it up again. So maybe Google found it to where if you just left it open the whole entire time, you have all of your settings just sitting in one area. So again, what it looks like now is when you hit your volume rocker, you tap here, it's just gonna have every single thing open with no minimize arrow button. And since we are talking about audio, this is gonna be feature number two that has changed. So we're just gonna go inside, hit on music. Then as I play a song, what will happen here is that there's another thing that was taken away. So this way, it just kind of makes it look a little bit more clean. So when you're taking a look at your widget right up over here of whatever is playing music, and you tap on this phone. So that means if you're connected to a Bluetooth speaker or a TV, whatever the case, what it looks like now is this. Now beforehand, there used to be an area that says devices and such. So I'm gonna go inside of that little uh, screenshot that I did right before this. So right over here, this is what it used to look like. So beforehand, when I was listening to a song, it has this phone and then down here it would say speakers and devices but it's probably already common sense for you to know that right after your phone is other things that you can connect to. So all they did was take away this wording right here and it goes directly over into those other devices that you're able to switch it to. Feature number three, I'm super excited about to test and I'm very curious about. It's one that is dealing with screen timeout. Now, when you go inside of your display settings and you go to screen timeout, normally out of the box, every phone is usually at 30 seconds to kind of save battery life. You know, if you're gonna set it down, maybe it thinks that you're already done. For me in my normal day-to-day -day life, I need it at two minutes because sometimes I do set it down, I walk away and then I come back within the two minutes for me to resume whatever I'm doing without me having to unlock my device. Now, what is brand new is adaptive timeout. So I don't know if this is gonna help me or go against me uh, because this one down here was already there. It was, called, it was called screen attention. It prevents the screen from turning off if you're looking at it. So basically it uses the front facing camera. So if you're playing like an idle game or you're reading or just looking at something, even if it goes past the two minute mark or your 30 second mark, it'll stay on because it knows that you are still looking at it. Now adaptive, it's gonna learn all of your usage. So I don't know if it's gonna know 
that I always put it as two minutes. I leave and I come back within the two minutes, or maybe it thinks I'm completely done after a minute. I, I haven't fully tested it, but I'm curious and I'm excited for it because maybe it'll help me. And it knows for the fact that I always pick it up right before the two minute mark. And maybe it'll just leave it on slightly longer because it knows I always turn it on immediately after possibly those two minutes. So you now have the ability for adaptive timeout automatically turns off your screen if you're not using it. Feature number four or change number four is dealing with circle to search, where if you look at anything on your display, you're able to press and hold on the very bottom middle. You can circle that and you're able to search whatever it is, if it's a purse or shoes, restaurant, food, whatever it may be. But here's the thing, before this little update that we just had, when I was trying to find the settings for circle to search, it was just kind of there and I couldn't even find it within the settings. I went through all the settings, did not find the option. I even went inside of the settings to search for either the word search or circle or circle to search. I searched all of that, wasn't able to find it, and now it's with inside of the display. Then inside of display, you go to navigation mode because it's kind of dealing with navigation on the bottom. You're navigating the phone or this is where you would be navigating. And now circle to search is just sitting right there. Easy for you to turn it on, turn it off and also find it. Change number five is dealing with your application tray when it comes down to the names of the application. So currently you can see that, you know, if it was Amazon Prime or Amazon Shopping, even the word calculator was cut off. Uh, Crypto.com was cut off. JBL Party was cut cut off. And so if you would like to have the full entire name of your applications, or even it was to take up two lines, you can actually turn it on. So this was just kind of a way to make it look a little bit cleaner, but maybe some people would like to know the full entire name of the application. So with beta three, you can just press and hold anywhere on your home screens. That's empty. Go to the home settings. And then as you scroll down, you can go right here where it says apps list settings. And this is where you can have show long app names. So they kind of shortened it, made it look a little bit cleaner, but for some people, maybe it's not as clean as they would want, or maybe they would like to see the full entire name. So you just turn it on and it should show the two lines if it's a longer name. Now for me personally, I might have to screenshot this, send it in as a bug, mentioning that it doesn't work, at least on my device here, because not only did I just do it right here and it doesn't show it, but also I reset my phone or I, I turned it off and I tried to get it to show pretty much in any way that I can think of and it just doesn't work. So this is one of those things that is supposed to work. I did see online where it does show for other people, but for me, it actually does not show up. And again, like I said from before, I did restart my phone. I turned it off and I kind of toggled the switch. I did a bunch of things to try to make it show up and it just doesn't. So for me, I'm gonna send this in over into the Android you know, beta application, which is right here. Again, if you have any issues, you go inside of feedback and that is where you send back any of these bugs so it wouldn't show up when it's actually officially launched. Change number six for this one, I'm just gonna show a screenshot from before. Now, before this update on Android 15 beta two, the Android version was only just stating vanilla ice cream. And now after this update with Android 15 beta three, it finally does say Android 15. Change number seven is dealing with the placement of the icons of when you take a screenshot. So your screenshot is sitting right here. This is what you just took the screenshot of. And then right next to it is these icons for share, edit, and capture more. So right there, it's sitting right next to the image. And now when you take a screenshot, it will be sitting below. So even if you're in a location of where there was a, of a uh, you know scroll more option, that one would show up. So if I go inside of the settings right here, and then I take another screenshot, what you'll see is everything is sitting below the screenshot versus sitting right next to it. So maybe this could be a little bit cleaner. Maybe it's being a little less smudged or you know condensed right there. But now instead of it being right next to it, it will just be sitting below the image that you just got done taking. And lastly, change number eight is dealing with color contrast. So now when you go inside of your settings, you go inside of display and you scroll down to where it says color. Originally it was, it was only just night light and colors. And now you have this option here for color contrast, and it makes it so much easier to make some big, you know, ch differences and changes when it comes down to the icons and as well as the text. So if you like to have a high contrast, you are able to do that. You have maximum text contrast as well. So it's just in a much simpler 
easier, faster way to find your color contrast right here underneath color inside of the display settings. So that is pretty much everything that's new in Android 15 beta 3. I do know that there was a few things added in for the Pixel tablet and the Pixel Fold. I wasn't able to really update those just yet, but there is a couple additional things you can do, but I wanted to show everything when it comes down to your Pixel phone devices as that is the device that most people own and what I have for this video currently. So hopefully you guys appreciated this video and everything that's brand new in Android 15 Beta 3. If you're curious on what is new with Android 15 in general versus Android 14, I have several videos for you going along the full entire process of all of the beta program. So hopefully you guys appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.